Hey guys, welcome back. Buckle up, lads. This is happening. So this is the uh, test network for CDP on Enosis. This is what I was talking to you guys about. And yeah, let's talk about it a little bit more. So this allows you to borrow stablecoin as CDP on their own terms. Borrowers can choose to adjust the rate they're willing to pay for the loans. Borrowers will establish market rates in accordance to the individual risk tolerance without relying on governance or algorith algorithm rate management. Each collateral will also have their own respective borrow market, which allows room for a market of rates to develop. So a trove is similar to a bolt, and then you can have different troves within your wallet. And then each trove can have different interest rates, and you can also have loan to different loan-to-value ratios. Uh, you can use out of the gate FXRP and Raffler, and those will be the sole collateral options. And then FBTC and staked XRP and SFLAIR as well will happen as the market matures. The minimum that you can borrow is $500 worth of uh, loan. And then you don't have to pay back your loan unless your LTB goes down. So if you keep it healthy, you could keep that loan forever. Um, the only lockup is that, yeah, if your LTV is above 75%, you can't withdraw. That means that you would just go out and then hope for a liquidation instead of actually paying it back. But if you're below 75, you can withdraw at any time. And then, yeah, your LTV, this is, this works very similar to Kinetic. It's just a different dynamic to get the, the stable coins. You have, depending on how, how much higher your LTB is, then the safer your loan is. And then for FXRP, it's going to be 90%, and for Raffler, it's going to be 83 Currently on Kinetic, it's 70% for SFLAIR. So this is going to be better because you have a higher LTB. And that doesn't mean that you have to reach it higher. It's just that your limit for borrowing is higher. So you can expect a higher um, drop down in price before you start getting liquidated. And then you have stability pools, that is the primary liquidation mechanism. And then you can deposit on the stability pools. You will pay your loan on an ongoing basis, making it suitable for short-term loans as well. The interest you pay is determined by the rate you set yourself. If you borrow $10,000 at 5% interest rate, you will pay $500 in interest after one year. The interest added to your out outstanding debt. This works the same thing as uh, Kinetic. And then you can set your rates. I'm, I'm going to give a little demo afterwards. And then depending on those rates, it's how like how far you are in line to being redeemed. We will talk about redemptions in a minute. And then you can always adjust the rate. But if you adjust it within seven days, then you pay a little penalty for that. So that means that you can't just go and try to be as slow as possible and then just move it a little bit every time that the redemption changes. Um, and if you do the seven days, I think you pay the equivalent of the interest rates for those seven days, which probably isn't that much. And then let's talk about risk. <clears throat> In this case, you imagine that you have the first loan with a, a half a percent interest rate. Your loan to pay value ratio is 75. That means that your redemption risk is pretty high and your liquidation risk is mid. And then you could have a few like low, low this case, you're paying 5%, you have 60% loan to value ratio. So your redemption and your liquidation risk is low. He, this person does not want to worry about redemptions nor liquidations. It's a passive position. And then you could have another uh, uh, trope where you have 2.5 interest rate. You take out 88% of your loan to value ratio. So that means that any kind of movement of the price of XRP, you're going to be liquidated. There's mid uh, redemption risk and the liquidation risk is pretty high. This person wants high capital efficiency and lower interest rate payments. You have to monitor your the price of your collateral very actively and the interest rates occasionally. Each one of your trove is being represented as an NFT, so that means that you can move. Right now, for example, I'm on Kinetic and I have a loan open, and if I wanted to move it, I would need to withdraw some collateral, open a new position, borrow money, pay it back, withdraw more collateral, move it back, borrow more money, pay it back. It's just a mess. So with this one, you can just transfer the NFT and then your CDP is in another wallet. 
this CDP is going to be the first stable coin that is backed by XRP. So this is massive. Uh, it's always redeemable for the underlying assets. So if you pay back your debt, you can withdraw your XRP at any time. And then here is where we're going to talk about the peg mechanism for the CDP. It's driven by monetary policy through user based interest rates that enables the CDP peg to dynamically respond to situations where the token is above or below 1%. When the CDP trades above 1, borrowers tend to reduce their rates to lower redemption risk, making borrowing more and holding CDP less attractive. This helps correct the price downwards. In contrast, when CDP trades below 1, arbitrage will initi initiate redemptions to restore the peg. Moreover, borrowers' exposure to redemption risk prompt them to increase interest rates, boosting demand for CDPs and earn through deposits and pushing the price upward. Here's a, visual a visualization between this relationship. So as the price increases, it lowers the redemption risk, borrowers lower interest rates, they lower the stability pool yield, there's less demand for the stablecoin, and then the price decreases. And then as the price goes down, like below $1, there's a higher redemption risk, so borrowers int raise interest rates, which then increases the yield for the stability pool. There's more stablecoin demand, and the price increases. This is a beautiful mechanism where it self-corrects depending on the market conditions. The way that you can earn yield on a Gnosis loan is by interest payment. Each borrowed market funnels 75% of the, its revenue to its stability pool. This is paid out in the in the stablecoin. So if you you could like borrow and then put it in there in the stability pool and you're going to be getting paid by doing that if your if your collateral in the stability pool gets used to liquidate on their collateralized loans you're effectively buying their collateral with a five percent discount this is paid out in the collateral assets stability pool stakers will be incentivized with rflr and abscess the only incentives that will be available would be for stability pool and now here's the main difference we already covered in the other video, but the main difference between borrowing and lending and CDPs is that when the price of the stablecoin is below one, you can get redeemed. And that means that the same amount of debt and the same amount of collateral gets removed from the from your trope. It's less impactful than getting liquidated because when you're getting liquidated, the price is dropping so fast that then you need to sell more tokens to cover your debt. In this case, what is enabling the redemption is that the price of the stablecoin is going down, not your collateral. So that makes a big difference. What happens if my trope gets redeemed? You can think of redemptions as somebody else is repaying your debt and retrieving an equi equivalent amount of your collateral in return. If your collateral FXRP is redeemed, an equivalent amount of your debt in USD terms is repaid. The redeemer receives your collateral, less the redemption fee, which remains in your trove. This means that at the time of redemption, you will likely incur a minimal loss in USD terms. If you still have your stablecoin, if you get redeemed, you can just go and buy back your collateral and start over. And this is the example. You have 10,000 FXRP as collateral and $20,000 in debt. After the redemption, you now have 5,000 plus the 5%, and you only have $5,000 in debt. So with, if you still have this 20,000, you could go back and buy the XRP that got removed from your trove. And then if your trove stays above the minimum debt threshold of $500, they still work the same, nothing has changed. And then if the debt is reduced to a lesser amount of amount of 500 or zero, they switch to a dormant operating mode. Uh, we will check that in a minute. What happens if several troves have the same interest rate? When rates are identical, the protocol used last in first redeemed. The last one to set the rate, either by opening or rate adjustments, gets redeemed first. All right, guys, until next time.